Anderson Gray with you on another video on another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, uh, where you can ask me any NFL question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. For all the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean patrons. Um, and just really to everybody, I appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you so much for uh, just all the support, really over the years, man. Over the years, because it's been uh, it's been a journey, man. It's been a journey, and, and I appreciate y'all being part of the process. Y'all have uh, displayed a lot of patience uh, with the the process, the videos, just just everything, really. So I appreciate it a lot. Uh, we got some great questions to get into. Got these bugs flying in my face, but it's all good. Uh, let's get into it. So the first question came from my guy Martin, and, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, "Ain't Graven, hope all is well with you." I was looking at our wide receiver group, thinking about how the coaching staff has wasted all this potential. But thinking about this, uh, with our wide receivers, they only scored two touchdowns after week seven. I really like these guys, but maybe it's time to explore new options. But then again, how much better would they be with a different coaching staff? I don't know. I wanted to get your thoughts on it. Also started asking myself this because of all the wide receivers potentially hitting the free agent market, such as Michael Gallup, Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, uh, Mike Williams, and I have to think uh, seven wide receivers, if I'm not mistaken. If we wanted to bring someone on, we would have to take someone off. I don't think it's realistic to have seven or eight wide receivers every year on the active roster. Sorry if this wasn't as Team Keep It Clean as far as talking about the wide receiver group, but I just wanted to ask and get yours and Team Keep It Clean's opinion on it. Um, it's something that I talked about too. Uh, well, not like this, but well, similar to this. Uh, I do think a, a lot of Ravens receivers would be uh, better off somewhere else if they like got drafted somewhere else because Ravens just don't have the history um, when it comes to drafting and developing wide receivers. But something to keep in mind, uh, Eric DaCosta seems to be making his attempts to change that. And, and it has been progress because we see Hollywood, he's been doing his thing and he got drafted and the Ravens have, they've been, he's been developing. Um, he's been getting better every year. Still got some stuff to clean up here and there, like especially with the drops. Um, but he's been getting better every year and more productive every year. Um, then you look at uh, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman, uh, he ended at least looking like he's going to be good. We hadn't got to see too much out of him yet. But from what we did see, so far, so good. Uh, so it seems as if with Eric DaCosta, at least with the first round picks, because with the first round picks, like, and this is something that I told people. If, if it's a receiver for the Ravens and you're picked in the first round, all right, you're going to be straight. But if you're picked in the third round or later, because Eric DeCosta hasn't done any second round picks yet. But if you're picked in the third round or later, it's, it's going to be a long shot, man. It is going to be a long shot uh, because just the level of investment is not going to be there like it would be for a first round pick, uh, especially at wide receiver. Uh, but... I do like and respect that Eric DaCosta is trying to change um, how people look at wide receivers when it comes to the Baltimore Ravens. He's trying to change um, just the whole, that whole mantra, Ravens mantra when it comes to uh, wide receivers. And, and he's really trying, and, and the thing too, like, what, it's going to be harder for Ravens to uh, bring wide receivers in. And it's not because they don't want to play with Lamar. Uh, it's because this offense is it's a run-first offense. It's, it's a run-based offense. And receivers, free agent wide receivers, shout out to the dog. Well, free agent wide receivers, they're going to be, oh, shout out to the other dog too, because that was definitely a different one. But free agent wide receivers are going to look at the Ravens. They're going to look at the offense. They're going to look at receivers numbers from there they gonna say oh, okay yeah hollywood yeah 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 he did his thing okay mark andrews okay yeah because he he like a tight end slash wide receiver um okay he did his thing too but um man how, how would i do that how would i fit in there because they they got the other guy they got this guy rashad bateman they had sammy Watkins, even though he got hurt bateman got hurt so it's kind of hard to really fully evaluate them like that um but I think they would just look at the offense overall. They would look at the offense over the past couple of years and look at the receivers' numbers over the past couple of years, and they probably think, like, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think this ain't the one for me. And, and this is, I think Ravens are actually kind of forced to develop their own wide receivers. They're kind of forced because a lot of free agent wide receivers will look at 
the Ravens in their situation and be like, mm, uh. so in order for the Ravens to really get somebody who was like that at wide receiver, who was a free agent, um, or even via potential trade, or well, more so free agency because they have more control over that and the free agent wide receiver has a say-so where they go. Um, in order for a wide receiver to really be like, all right, yeah, I'm going to the Ravens, I feel like Ravens would have to give up more money. They would have to give up some extra money. They would have to outbid other teams because, because of their offense. Because that receiver, he could look at it and be like, ah, man, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Because, again, he see, see Hollywood getting his, Andrews getting his, but then he'd be like, oh, outside of that, I don't know, man. So um, I would be willing for the Ravens to take that chance. Uh, that'd be nice. But, oh, but back to your question. He said that he felt like somebody would have to go. And, yeah, they would. They would. And as, as much as I would hate it, it, it would actually be exactly what we're talking about, what you're talking about in your question, though. Miles Boykin. I think that Miles Boykin is going to be gone. Uh, I think they're going to trade him uh, or release him, unfortunately. And with Miles Boykin, um, he's somebody that I felt like just didn't really get that legitimate, consistent opportunity. Um, and again, I don't know what went on behind the scenes. I don't know what went on in practice, anything like that. But I just feel like he ain't really get a, a fair shake. I don't feel like his potential was really unlocked uh, with the Ravens. And um, I feel like the, like the situation you talked about, would, would these receivers be better under different coaching staff? I do feel like that. I, I, yes, I do. Um, and with Miles Boykin, I think under a different coaching staff, really given an opportunity, okay, he could do his thing. Now, something else to think about, too. Um, something we had talked about a, like a long time ago. I know John Harbaugh, he shut it down. Um, but I feel like right at, at this point, like what would it hurt? Because you can tell that like based off of action, not even words, but because actions speak louder than words, right? The Ravens, when Miles Boykin came back from injury last year, um, cause he had a, he had a hamstring injury first. Um, that kept him out a lot of the off season uh, and early in the season, but then he had a, a finger injury. Once he got back from that finger injury, um, he I think he was on the field for a couple plays, maybe. Uh, a couple of offensive snaps, maybe. And most of it was blocking. I think he did catch like a pass or two, but he was just primarily special teams. Um, so I don't see them, I don't anticipate them bringing him back because they just, they were like, oh, okay, well, you're just going to do special teams. Um, and they could save some cap from releasing or trading him. Uh, so that's why I see that happening. Uh, and, but my point is when I say all that, I, I don't think they're going to use him. I don't think they're going to use him in the future. Um, so if they release him or traded him, they will save that money and they would get rid of a player who they, they don't plan on using. Um, but I do think if given the, the right chance, oh, back to what I was saying before. I, my thoughts got all messed up. Um, at this point, where Miles Boykin is with the Ravens, I feel like um, if he was willing to do it, uh, because I feel like they should approach him first, uh, or he could be like, no, I don't want to do it. But I feel like at this point, right here, right now, I feel like they could have done it last year too, but it's okay. At this point, right here, right now, what would it hurt to try Miles Boykin at tight end? I feel like. See, but again, this is where it's on him, cause he could be like, "Man, no, I'm a receiver. I don't, I'm not. I don't want to play tight end. I don't want to play tight end. I'm a receiver. I'm a wide receiver. I am not a tight end. I don't want to play tight end. Cause I feel like with him, like again, was Josh Oliver the best blocker? No. Miles Boykin, he's a good blocker. He got good size, and then if he added on a little bit more weight, not too much weight though, cause you don't want to lose all your speed. You might lose a tiny bit. But even if he loses a tiny bit, he will still has some real good speed for a tight end. Got good size. He's 6'4", 6'5". He can catch. And, man, I just... I feel like, like again, what's the worst that could happen from him? You ain't using him at wide receiver anyway. So if, if he was willing, then I, I, would, I would love for the Ravens to, like, take that shot. Take that chance um, on just trying it out. Just trying it out. Giving it a shot. Next question came from my boy Phil. He said, right now we sit with 8.7 mil in cap space. An article predicted if these four players, Ben Powers, Tavon Young, uh, Villanueva, and Boykin, all get released, that could open up about 16 mil more in cap space. Wow. And I, th I thought Ben Powers was a free agent. 
I thought he was getting ready to be a free agent. He still got a year left on his deal. I really thought Ben Powell was getting ready to be a free agent. But, all right, I guess not. But anyway, um, we talked about Boykin. Um, that's oh, like to be expected, unfortunately. Um, Villanueva, that's expected. Tavon Young is one that we've been hearing about a lot. Like, all of us have been hearing about that potential of him being released a lot. Um, and that's a tricky one. That's a very, very tricky one. Uh, but we'll see. But anyway, he said, Then hopefully Humphrey and Peters have their contracts get restructured into signing bonuses, which could open up at least another 10 mil. So we could sign at least one to two free agents. So, Engraving, what position would you like to see filled during free agency next month? Oh. Mm. Um... Uh, what position would I like to see field in free agency next month? Um, maybe right tackle, right? And I, I know we have Patrick McCary, but right tackle. Um, I, I I feel like like with Patrick McCary, he can play right tackle, but I feel like you can get like a true right tackle um, to to hold that down. Uh, but I'm, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how Ravens address that. Like, if, if they address... Because the contract that Patrick McCary gave... I mean, that the... Pat, excuse me. The Patrick... I can't even talk. The contract that Patrick McCary is on, it's a pretty... Um, it's not a right... It's not right tackle money. So you can tell they don't view him as their premium right tackle. They view him as an all-around guy. So he got paid like an all-around guy. Um, he didn't get paid like, oh, he's all right tackle, or oh, he's all left tackle. No, he got paid as an all-around guy. Um, so that says a lot. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, but I'll say right tackle. Uh, we just we were just talking about wide receiver. But, yeah, I don't think they go free agency wide receiver. I, I think the draft, and I'm going to still keep saying it, man, I really do think. In the first three rounds, they're going to take a wide receiver. I, I really, really do. Um, oh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, but anyway, back to the free agency. What position should they fill? Um, the, depending on... Ooh, safety. That would be a nice one. Because I, everything I hear about Kyle Hamilton seems amazing, but it doesn't seem like the Ravens are going to be even with, anywhere even close to being able to pick him. Um, so free safety, because that would be interesting if they, because I don't, I don't anticipate on it. I don't anticipate them doing it, but you just never know because he is physical. He can tackle and he, that was his original position. Well, his second original position, Brandon Stevens. I don't anticipate them moving him back to corner, but you know, Ravens are one of those teams. The more you can do, um, and we'll see if Mike McDonald is that same, if he takes that same approach. Hopefully he don't have them doing too much. But anyway, um, with uh, if they got a free safety um, in free agency, like the true free safety, because that could help cover up a lot, um, especially with a lot of them big plays that they gave up too. But if they got a true free safety, then um, and they possibly move Brandon Stevens back to corner, and they did that move that you were talking about, and uh, oh, if they cut Tavon Young, they could have Brandon Stevens in the slot. They could have Marlon Humphrey in the slot. Like if you put Brandon Stevens back at corner, that helps your secondary a lot because you get Marcus Peters back, you get Marlon Humphrey back. Tavon Young could be gone, so you're like, oh man, who's a slot guy? But you get Brandon Stevens in there. Um, or again, put Marlon Humphrey there too. Uh, and then, of course, there's the draft and free agency. But So that's something to think about. Oh, linebacker. 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 Um, I know about Bobby Wagner. I was reading about him, uh, about his contract. Like, he has, he, he has no guaranteed money on his contract. Um, man, these love books. He has no guaranteed money on his contract, but he has a... If he's still on the Seahawks, then it's like a 20 mil cap hit, something like that. Yeah, camera died. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, with Bobby Wagner, uh, with his contract, um, yeah, he 
he's set to be a 20 something mil cap hit but he has no guaranteed money so if they cut him they would get a, they would get a lot of cap uh, relief um, so that could be a good one but yeah linebacker just somebody who somebody who can hold it down there uh, at linebacker um, who else um, yeah offensive line linebacker if they can get a, a, an interior defensive lineman who can provide some pressure, uh, who's good against the run and the pass, um, and that person that could potentially command some decent amount of money. I mean, all these all these players could command a decent amount of money, um, but you gotta you get what you pay for. Uh, mm. So if they could do that, because defensive line, I'm think I feel like defensive line is gonna be a mix of free agency and the draft. Um, I don't, cause I don't know they ain't gonna go all draft for no defensive line. No, they ain't gonna do that. Um, cause they ain't gonna have just a bunch of young dudes out there. That's what I do in Madden, but they ain't gonna do that as, as far as the Ravens. Um, so yeah, so defensive line, uh, really just everything, man. Really just everything. Um, and I know you can't, you're not gonna address every single thing in the draft. I mean, excuse me, in free agency, but yeah, so. If I if I had to like narrow it down, um, then it would be uh, linebacker, free safety, right tackle. Oh, possibly center too. That could be one, depending on what happens. So center. Um, oh, tight end. Tight end could be one too, because yeah, Nick Boyle's cool, but Nick Boyle um, he got good hands too. But just to have another, and they they tried it with Josh Oliver, just didn't work out. But just to have another guy, okay, camera actually didn't die. It just got too hot out of here. Um, but somebody like, because they tried with Josh Oliver, it didn't work out. But if they could get somebody who, athletic tight end, stretch the field a bit. Again, they don't got to be Mark Andrews, but somebody who can make some stuff happen. Uh, so that, uh, that's what I would say, too, would be tight. That's my homie, ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.